Hello and welcome to the Thumb Through Education Research Made Approachable. Now, some of you guys who have been listening for a while may remember when we went week by week, chapter by chapter through how writing shapes thinking. So today we're going to kind of not literally combine uh, those episodes, but we're going to do kind of a complete overview. We're going to do a critical review of how writing shapes thinking as a comprehensive work to kind of continue this theme of shaking things up that we've been on this month. So How Writing Shapes Thinking, A Study of Teaching and Learning, that's the subtitle, was written by Judith Langer and Arthur Appleby and published in 1987 by the National Council of Teachers of English, the NCTE. This collaborative work is concerned primarily with the contributions of written language to learning processes and cognitive development. Appleby and Langer argue that writing allows for careful consideration and articulation of ideas, demands organization of thought, and encourages meaningful reflection on one's ideas. Thus, the teaching of writing impacts the thinking requirements for students. Such an influence suggests that writing should play an important role in subject courses across a school's curriculum. The ninth edition of An Introduction to Language That's the textbook for my structure of English class. I had to cite it for this report. States that writing allows communication across space and through time and that the creation and development of writing systems is one of the greatest human achievements. However, the authors claim simply asking students to write cannot accomplish this goal, nor does writing automatically lead to a better understanding of the topic at hand. With these ideas in mind, the authors, that is the authors of How Writing Shapes Thinking, sought to understand the process by which this can happen. They note that the popular process writing approach, while familiar to the English teacher, is lacking in other subjects. Appleby and Langer argue that broadening the use of writing in other subjects in some cases could change what it means to know a subject, shifting the dynamic of the classroom and those within it. As well-known scholar and author Lisa Delpit claimed in her work, Other People's Children, I wrote a review of that book a couple years back, let me know if you want to kind of hear that as well, a student who constantly finds her dialect under scrutiny will eventually settle on silence. The same is true for students unfamiliar with the discourse of a given subject. As noted in Chapter 3 of How Writing Shapes Thinking, there are significant differences between science and social studies classes in what kinds of writing appear, the skills and language the assignments involve, and how writing is used to progress towards the instructor's overarching content goals. J.Y. Park, a professor at Clark University and author of Learning from Urban Immigrant Youth About Academic Literacies, explores these issues further in her NCTE published article, All the Ways of Reading Literature, Pre-Service English Teachers' Perspectives on Disciplinary Literacy. According to Park, the primary goal of disciplinary literacy instruction is to increase student achievement across areas of content by familiarizing them with the use and rules of language in each. Importantly, Chapter 4 of How Writing Shapes Thinking describes the use of writing to consolidate new information in the classroom. In the assessment of various uses of writing activities in the classroom, the authors found that preparatory, review, and reformulation activities led to different patterns of thinking about the material. Activities meant to help students reformulate and extend concepts led to the most concern with structure and relationships among ideas, while review writing tasks led to the least concern. They would later find that writing more overall could lead to improved recall abilities later. Following these findings, the authors resolved to examine the relationship between what students do during their study tasks to specific aspects of their memory later. This study included a shift of attention from essays to students' recall of particular information they had read in passages, allowing the authors to measure student attention to particular items. Significantly, the authors found that the more a student reformulates and manipulates content, the more likely he or she is to recall its details and its themes later. Thus, Appleby and Langer's collaborative efforts culminate in the drawing of three significant conclusions. Number one, writing supports more complex thinking and learning about the subjects that students are expected to learn. Number two, 
Written language makes a contribution to content learning and can support the more complex kind of reasoning that is increasingly necessary in our complex information-based culture. And number three, thoughtful argument must be prioritized over simple recitation. Students must be judged on how they reason and learn in addition to what they know. The primary purpose of this work how Writing Shapes Thinking, was to investigate the relationship between written language and intellectual growth. This research question, set forth in the introduction, informs the two that follow. The authors not only successfully collect and analyze data on this relationship in general, they also examine in detail how different kinds of writing activities can transform the writing process and thought patterns of students, as well as the kinds of knowledge that students carry with them into the future. Regarding pedagogy, the text offers significant findings on the effectiveness of various writing activities in widely dissimilar subject area classrooms, with the encompassing conclusion for instructors that writing activities can support content goals in nearly every tested academic context. While educators in every subject area have traditionally used writing to evaluate student learning, Appleby and Langer's work has demonstrated its significance in supporting and furthering students' academic learning. More generally, they have demonstrated the profound impact of the act of writing on the human brain's processes and perceptions. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day, and never stop learning.